Okay, hey, come on. Give me something good here, Edmund. Give me something. Ooh, money Ooh, is power. Is great. Okay. Look your item, too. Okay, void. Great start. I mean, you're essentially another character plus. Who should I be? All right, let's do this. Okay. Ooh. All right, let's... This is going to be busted. Let me share the seed because I know people like seeing this. Okay, there you go. All right, let's... So what do you have? You have Razor? Occam's Razor? I have a... Uh, I have a Dole Razor. Okay. And Tech, which is great. This is great. So... We're pretty busted already. So now that Repentance has been out for a little bit, what's your... Are you happy with the launch? Because I know that you said in, you, in the podcast with Ryan, you said you weren't happy with the Bumbo launch and after Bless, after Earth Plus launch. Are you happy um, with this one? Oh, yeah. I'm very, very... This is one of the smoothest launches. I think the smoothest launch I've ever... Whoa. Oh, is everything okay? <laughs> yeah. The smoothest launch uh, I've ever had was probably the end is nigh. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then this. I think this would be... Uh, incredibly smooth. I'm really happy with it. And for someone that's not in the business, what made like Bumbo not a good launch? Bumbo wasn't a good launch because it it launched extremely buggy, um, and there were just a lot of issues overall, which had to do with really crazy crunch. Um, and James, the guy that I I worked with, the programmer, kind of like lost his mind after everything kind of on you know caved in on him life wise it would during crunch it just basically destroyed him i was i was very worried about it from the beginning because I, I, you never want to feel like as the person who's like the head of the the team you know you don't want to feel like you're taking someone and pulling them into uh their demise and uh, i think at like the three year mark it was a four year cycle at the three year mark i was i started to get really worried and i had a feeling that this might break him and it he kind of got broken during the end of crunch and then once it launched he got very broken and just kind of disappeared for a while just because it's a lot of pressure and a lot of work and... yeah a lot of work a lot of work a lot of pressure a lot of frustration just in general it's it, you know game development is also very isolating very lonely and you got to have a pers certain personality type to really um so I don't want to. I don't want to just throw this run away. I gotta pay attention. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll take it. When you say crunch, like and that's determined by the publisher. No, it's determined by us. I don't really have like I have a publisher for Isaac, but it's not like a real publisher relationship. It's mm -hmm. kind of like you do what you're gonna do, and then we'll we'll launch it. And there's hearts up here. And then what? Why the crunch on Bumble? You're just like it's it's been in development too long. It's been four years. It was supposed to be a year long project. It's like it. it sometimes it feels like, unless you set a date, it's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And and it seemed like a realistic date from the the progress that we were making to do it. And you set the date, you lock it down, and I've never really had it completely fall apart when it comes to that sort of stuff. So I thought you know we'll be fine. We set a date with Steam, and once you kind of lock that down and you've announced it, it's usually a really bad idea to go back on it. Um, but in hindsight, I kind of this it, Bumbo was a. I didn't realize how rough it was until after launch, and I wish I would have just pushed it back instead. But uh, you want to eat this? Yeah. So I just wait here. Let me. Uh, I'd rather have this. Oh no, I guess there's more combos. Let me poop real quick though. You never know. Okay. Oh, can eat it. Just suck this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. He, he can. I'll drop the poop later when we get a better item. So for for Bumbo, like uh, when it was released, like when did you know like this is this isn't what I wanted it to be? Did you know right, right away? away? You did. Yeah. We should. You should eat this too. Okay. We gotta come back. I don't know if we'll get enough charges. And then for so so you learn something from everything with with Bumbo. What did you take away from that project? It's like okay, hey, look, this was the biggest takeaway that I'm gonna be careful of or learn from in the future. I need that? Just that usually I'm right when it comes to a lot of stuff, and I have to go with what I, you know, what I know and what I've experienced, and just 
be forcible <laughs> with, with like make sure like i i should have i should have hired um another programmer uh at the probably two year mark mm -hmm. um so i didn't break james but james you know asked me please don't do that like and i didn't want to like i didn't want him to take it personally you know yeah uh, i felt i felt bad and i thought you know we'll just do it but that's kind of what i definitely learned like i knew kind of early early in that we needed some help and i should have just gone with my gut but you kind of went with like the human side to be like well i don't want to disappoint this person or oh, yeah, i understand I don't wanna, yeah i don't want to put them spot. in that A pr we're, this is this is, we're good here no damage no damage this is xl right so we can get a double deal here hopefully it's possible no. i think it's possible i can't remember if it's because it's level one this is xl do we have yeah this is xl4 we're okay okay no red heart no red heart no red heart no red heart no guess not okay no no yeah no um i'll take it all right Ooh, that's a good one. All right, All right. we can go. Yeah, down let's here. go. Um, what did you think of uh, Spelunky 2? Did you play it much? I played it. I tested it. I tested it for quite a while. Okay. What I really, I mean, I love, I love Spelunky. Um, it, I, I don't know. I was pretty stressed out <laughs> during it, uh, so it, it stressed me out a bit more, and I think I put it down because I, I felt uh. I felt like I just couldn't do it yet. I'm waiting for it to come out on, on Switch to dig back into it. What do you mean you're str like stressed out with life stuff or the game was stressing you out? The life stuff was oh. stressing me out and the game was making it worse. <laughs> uh, too much. Uh, I was I was, I was was in uh, development uh, hell as well, so. And for you? I, I mean, I we, we went through, I don't know if it, what Danielle told you, but yeah, we've been through the ringer in the past year and a half, um, like from the beginning of from before her her pregnancy uh till now it's been total hell like with the she just mentioned like that you guys were renting and it was oh yeah that was the end of it like no it's it's uh it it the whole thing st started with uh this is just a downer though <laughs> to talk about um danielle got pregnant and um it exploded uh and on her ovary so she had an atopic pregnancy that actually almost killed her. Oh my gosh. Um, she almost bled to death. We didn't know it was wrong. Whoops. Atopic uh, meaning like to it's it was on the it was it was on an ovary. Uh the, the 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 baby was attempting to grow in the fallopian tube attached to the ovary and it bursted both things and then it adhered to the ovary and was constantly bleeding. So we uh she had to get that Thing taken out um and then she thought you know they said you know the, your chances of having another kid are low um and so we decided that we were going to try to have another one just just in case and then <laughs> then she fell down the stairs and broke her feet uh a few months after that and uh <laughs> that was horrible she was wheelchair bound for a month and i had to push her around the house and you have um, a little one running around the house too. Yep. And you're in development and of <laughs> a million different things. It was just like this. It, there, it just keeps going though. It's like then um, she did get pregnant and had a, we, she had a very complicated pregnancy. She was sick the whole thing, whole way through. And then we had a premature baby, um, which is great now. She's totally perfect. Um, but that was during the heat of COVID, where no one was allowed to come in and see, you know, it was just me coming in there and no help. And then when we got home with a after a few days, the fires happened in California and we had to evacuate our house. With a, a newborn? <laughs> with a newborn. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, uh, I heard the, was like, tree well, fall. Was, well, well, she was in the hospital. So the, the whole fires were caused by this lightning storm, this freak lightning storm that came over the Bay Area and just and we lived up on the top of a hill. 
So like we could see this lightning storm just ripping through the forest, just lightning, like insane end of the world looking stuff. And uh, it was, while that was, while that stuff was like basically happening, before that was happening, there were a lot of wind storms. There was like this precursor to the storm coming in. And that was when Danielle had just given birth and she was in the hospital. I was, I, I would have to go home to sleep because I can't sleep at a hospital. So mm -hmm. I'd sleep, get a few hours of sleep, come back. In the morning, a bunch of trees fell down in front of my house from the wind. And I was stuck <laughs> there for like half of the day for them to like cut. It was so bad. It was, it was such a death trap. It was such a death trap that we ended up selling it while we were in a hotel. Like we got rid of that house because I, I just couldn't go back, go back to that during all this stuff. At some um, point, you had to start laughing, right? Like what? Like what else could that? <laughs> it did. It seemed. It seemed ridiculous. And like, not to mention the fact that then you know, the pandemic was happening. Um, during all this stuff too. So what? So. What do you credit to coming out the other end? Like happier and like per stable. perseverance <laughs> it was it was just a very long waiting process but i knew we would get there and things have gotten so much easier now since you know since moving here and the the end of it was that like what she was talking about the transition into the rental which we were staying in because we had sold our house um and the rental wasn't ideal <laughs> um do you want this uh, that's a good one yeah i'll take it okay <laughs> Nice. So when you say perseverance, like where there's sometimes you're like, like just keep going. Like, what do you tell yourself? Because it's all, I mean, like having a family and then when something bad happens, one thing, but having a family and then like having so much stuff go wrong. Like, what did you do to stay stable? Uh, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have, I have no idea. Like just, uh, we are a very good team and we've always been a very good team and we stayed as close together as possible and we're you know supporting each other as much as possible and we're just very realistic about expectations and what we need to ah sorry what we need to do uh do you want to uh when we clear this floor do you want to try to get the key piece yeah, yeah let's do it Oh, well, maybe I should have gotten that holy light so I could have propped it with the uh, oh, with laser. the tech, yeah. That would have been smart. Too bad I'm stupid. Um, there's a rock. Oh no, it looked like one. It's not. All there's right. one. All right, you got it. Oh, uh, watch out! I, I, watch yeah, out I for heard you parts. last time. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, sure. Probably. That's not bad. Hold the door. What is that? Do? Uh, I'd rather have. Well, you want you want to grab it? What do you have? You don't have anything. No, you do. You have the blood penny. What do uh, I? Eh, forget it. It just lets us out of rooms if we want to get out of the room. Oh, okay. Um, right when we walk in. I don't care about. How that. you want to do this? Is there stuff this in this game really where you're easy. like, where like, I want to take this out, like complete no, items? No, I'm not. I'm not a huge like, let's let's take this out type thing. I'd rather I'd rather fix it. And that's what I tried to do with a lot of the weird items that, that people weren't taking for the most part. I tried to fix them. I'm still attempting to now. Um, I'd much rather them stay in and then uh, this is going to be better. F even though you have a lot of life, this is better for you. You sure? Because my the tears up's not going to do that much for me here. All right. There you go. You take it. Then you take the soulies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so like something like door jam, right? Like, I guess someone uses it, right? Yeah. Is there some... I mean, I would I would take it if it was like... If we were really trying to slip through the game. Like, it's great in the womb if you want to just slip through. Mm. Um, and there are ways to exploit it. Okay. Uh, I haven't done this on co-op. I'm um, assuming that we both have to become lost. Okay. Yeah, let's try it. So like so so you played a little bit of Spelunky too. I mean clearly, and and I know you've talked in the past or even recently about like the second Isaac. Did that is, and I know you haven't decided anything yet, but has that impacted your thoughts on what a sequel will look like? Um, it has confirmed a lot of my thoughts because with when doing a game like I 
You can stay over rocks, by the way, when as the lost, just oh, okay. stay over rocks. <laughs> okay, okay, gotcha. You won't be hurt. Uh, uh, I think I think he did a lot right um, with uh, with Spelunky 2, with not like reinventing the wheel and kind of just remixing the game and adding more. Mm -hmm. um, I think that sometimes that is for games that are really iconic and classic and people really like hardcore love. Um, I think that might be the way to go. And that was what uh, your gut was telling you. Yeah, I, I felt like because I felt like realistically, you don't want to pull a, a Legend of Zelda two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's a bold, it's a bold choice, like I said. But t the risk reward is, you know, it's it's crazy. Like you don't want to. It's like it's either it's either Breath of the Wild or it's Zelda two. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Some people uh, really like Zelda two, Edmund. Yeah, some people like eating poo as well, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Chat wants to know, for entertainment purposes only, we're not propagating any violence. Who do you think would win in a hypothetical fight for charity? Um, fist fight, you or Derek Jew? You're Derek you. You or Derek you. Um, we need to find another bomb. We, we, we have to... Oh, we do. Um, she's probably one in the shop. Uh... Hmm. I'm a lot taller than Derek and bigger. Okay. If it's like an MMA fight, I would win. I don't know what his uh, punching skills are, but I'm pretty sure I could beat Derek Yu in a fight. Can it see? And this is like, you know, I know you a little bit. I, I, I picked Derek. You want to know why? And it's, it's not meant to be offensive towards you. I feel like there's like a soft side of you where it like when it came to like, where I'm not going to throw a full punch. Yeah. You, you won't throw the, the knockout blow. I mean, it's possible. It's, it's possible. But you would take yourself over Derek. But, you uh, uh, dude, uh, Derek is, I think, a bigger softie than me, though, when it comes to all this stuff. So I think we'd both just, like, slap each other around and giggle. <laughs> okay. Roll around on the ground. <laughs> uh, we have, two, a grand we have two of diamonds. Is that good for something? You could probably, if you Google Edmund McMillan, Derek, you, you could probably see a picture of me holding him like a baby and he has a diaper on. Excuse me? Yeah. Can Do I that. get can I get some context? Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh there's also also if you Google possibly Google Derek U nude. So Derek uh was a fan of my original game Gish, mm -hmm. and he actually sent in a picture of him naked covering his crotch with a laptop that had Gish on it. Is that something game designers do on like the back channels of Discord or something? Yeah, well, back back in like the early two thousands when we were having lots of fun, <laughs> when there was when there was no money to be had and all the camaraderie was perfect. Everybody <laughs> everybody loved each other. It was amazing. Um, would you ever? And I don't know how it works, but or if it's too far outside the box, would would you ever collaborate with something like that, or is the process too involving where it doesn't make sense to do that? Um. So Derek and I are, so Derek is like, does everything. Derek programs, designs and, and whatever, uh, and art. Mm -hmm. And I do all that, but I don't program. Mm -hmm. So if we were working on something together, it might be a little difficult because one person, so in a situation like this, and I'll admit that I do this, um, I am a ball hog when it comes to design. I want to be the lead or I'm not, you know, I'm catcher or I'm nothing. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. Like it needs to be my, I'm not, I'm trying to get better at it. Um, let's get in there. Nice. Um, I'm trying to get better at that. And I think I've gotten better at it, especially with this. I don't, I mean, you can ask Vin, but I don't think I, I don't think I was like a, a total dick when it came to, do you want this? I feel like I've got a lot of stuff. Um, what is this? Jurassic Park egg? Yeah, not great. Okay. You go right? Sure. Chat's saying card. What do I want to do with this card? Oh, they want you to double your your coins. Well, we, we can pick up some more coins. You want to try and get yeah, it at the same time? Sure. Three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. That works. 
But, but you're uh, saying you're like... I'm not used to analog sticks. I'm used to keyboards. You're used to your mad so cats. I understand. I'm going a little, I'm going a little fast here. Uh, uh, but you're saying when design, like you like to be driving the ship. Yeah. It's harder for me to be invested if not. Yeah. But that said, like there are a lot of people like... I'm, I'm good friends with George Fan as well. And uh, he made Plants vs. Zombies. And I, okay. I would love to work on a game with him. And it's just... I'm sure we can make something work out. But... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um... Is it kind of like a thing with too many cooks in the kitchen? Oh, for sure. Yeah. But maybe it could be amazing. I don't know. Like I, I worked on Braid with John Blow and I had no impact on its design, but I um, I did the art and character design and animation for I, originally for it. I didn't know that. Is that public knowledge? Do. Yeah. Are you um, in the credits? Not, not, of course. I did the did character design and the original animation. Well, I don't know. Maybe he wanted to like usurp the credits for himself. I don't know. No, no. Um, someone eventually, like uh, David Hellman, took over um, because I couldn't, I couldn't get. It's it's pretty funny. So I, I could have had like a chunk of, of the braid money back in the day, and I, I was doing a contract work, uh, for John, and I did it because I I loved I loved the prototype. I thought it was amazing, and I just wanted to be part of it, um, and kind of maybe kind of learn. Um, I just wanted to work with John, and. Uh, we got to a point where he couldn't pay me because he ran out of money mm -hmm. and I couldn't pay the rent. So I was like leaning on it hard and he was like, I can give you a percentage instead. And I said, I can't do that because I need to fill this <laughs> gap <laughs> with with work, you know, like it needs to be work. So I ended up hiring um, uh, David Hellman to kind of redo the stuff that I couldn't do uh, because I couldn't <laughs> do it. But it's, it's, it's a whatever. Um, so I don't I, mean I to love, laugh from percentage of like one of the you know best-selling indie games especially during the time yeah i mean honestly i never never felt bad to me I, yeah. I always felt like you know what's mine is mine and what's somebody else's is somebody else's and this guy's fun i didn't know you worked on the guy that's cool i didn't yeah oh, we got john this. blow is a cool dude i like john a lot well, he gets he gets a lot of guff from people but he's a very kind gentle intelligent and interesting interesting guy i f i feel like as someone who's been involved in tv i feel like that documentary you were the most likable in it you know and that like a documentary is a documentary right you don't see everything but yeah i think you got a and a great edit and some people maybe but I, they can't make everyone look good in something like that you know yeah i i <laughs> Sometimes I wonder. So um, two people made it. Uh, Jamie and Lisanne. Uh, they're they're married. Um, and Jamie, I think, felt a kinship to me. And I'm. I sometimes I wonder if that's why I was portrayed a little better. <laughs> because I'm, dude. I'm sure I said some totally stupid shit like that. That could have added into the movie. And I, I'm. I, I was like delirious due to lack of sleep through probably a majority of that movie and i don't remember much of it like they'll I'll watch some of the movie and be like i don't remember them being in the car with me i don't remember this scene i don't remember any of this stuff um you want to grab this though yeah i'll take this again um like i need range uh wait okay we're on two, we're on the we're on the first one right we're not yeah, yeah first good um but i mean who knows i it it never hurts becoming friends with a producer. I think it's probably the... <laughs> well, it's not to say, like, they loved everyone involved. And they. I think that they... I think that they very fairly... And I've had this conversation <laughs> with them. Very fairly portrayed everyone exactly how they are. Um, they... I'm positive that they had footage of Phil that would make him look a lot worse than he, he did. Um, and even Tommy as well. Like, it's... It's not... Uh, I, think it, I think it was fair. Uh, but it's maybe it's easier for me to say because I didn't come off too bad. Now th that's my take on it is like you got to give the producers something to make you in a bad light. You know what I mean? Or show you in a bad Like if you never said anything, if you said one thing dumb, then that's on you. But if you go the whole production and you don't, you know, it's kind of a, yeah. a different deal. Um, I'm sure I, I'm sure I said dumb things though. Where did uh? So I know where did you get the idea to like for the lost tri oh, I, love, I, I, love, I love the left one. It's about one of my favorite <laughs> items in the game. You want, well, you can pass the 
pass take it and pass the, you the thing it. to me yeah and uh, i'll eat it okay so now i okay okay i, I love doing it on the items because it's either like it's yeah, feast I'm or fine. famine i don't uh, think we wanted to uh, double poops though this is uh <laughs> this and soy milk are my favorite items in the game but go uh, you but i wanted to ask uh so the transition to become lost on uh oh, whoops. on the halloween level where did where did you get that idea from uh the loss on the on in the mirror yeah uh that's a that is actually an old oh wait yeah, he's not he's ours that's okay. an old design um that i wanted to do since the original game mm -hmm. but i never had an appropriate place to do it i wanted to have a whole zone of the game so that was the original design for the loss and it became a character i in the original game i wanted to have a whole area that once you pushed into it it forced you to be the lost mm -hmm. and there was a bunch of stuff after that that you would, could only experience as the lost and i thought it would be this really cool zone that would be unseen for a majority of people and it could be really exciting to like see all this new content through it mm -hmm. and eventually it felt like a lot of extra work for um something that not a lot of people would be able to do so i just turned that character turn it into a character later mm. um and then when we were trying to figure out so the in, in anti-birth the mod um there the, there were three key pieces and they were all tied to puzzles and the puzzles were kind of like once you do them once they're done and it kind of felt a little funky um and uh, Vin also said that he wasn't a huge fan of them and he wanted to kind of re reinvent them. Mm -hmm. And I thought they would just work better as, or more appropriate for the game as challenges. Little milli, milli, little mini challenges that could also become somewhat ex exploits. So like the mirror world, you can, if you're bold enough, you can farm the boss as well. You can, you can kill the boss and get a double, uh, you can get another boss item from him mm -hmm. if you want to get bold with it. Um, and then this this one was kind of last minute, but I'm still really proud of it. It's more of a mood mood setting challenge, <laughs> but it's um it's like a Metroid challenge where <laughs> in Metroid where they steal your items and make you uh, scared. <laughs> this is a blood pumping challenge. I mean, All right. we got to be you on the same this? page here. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay. The head is actually a playoff of uh, Jason's mom's head in whoops in the Friday the 13th. Oh, the video game. You I actually thought, played that? <laughs> yeah, I did. I owned it. That's like considered one of the worst games of all time, right? It's not. You know, it is bad, but it does some weirdly innovative things and takes some takes some. Uh... Nice dodge. The, the, the head is not as bad as you'd think. It might be worse because it's kind of randomly targeting either of us. You gonna grab that? Yeah. But you can bait her really, really easy. She used to be harder. Nice. Oh, we need a bomb. Oh, daddy. Okay, okay, Wait. okay. Wait, where? <laughs> I think we gotta go south. Gotta go south. Oh yeah, there it is. I've never, I've never seen this one before. Oh, get us oh, out of here! You're stuck up there. Oh, <laughs> you got it. All right. So, what did you like about Friday? Uh, oh no! Get out of okay. There. <laughs> Keep going. Please. No. How much more? How much do I have a heart? You piece. Just go. Just go. Just go. 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 Oh. Go. <laughs> Oh, uh, now you got to kill a boss. Well, you got a lot of life everywhere. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, you, you said it was a mood changer. You're not wrong. Yeah, it's 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 it can be very tense. Oh, uh, well, I don't remember what you were saying about last, so. like, what did you like from uh, Friday the 13th? Uh, Friday the game? 13th. Yeah. Um, I liked that there was the protagonist that was like ever present and you didn't know where they were. It was like the first game to do that. Like he could be anywhere and he would appear randomly. Like you had like this mission that you were trying to do and Jason would just appear and it was tense in that respect. Um, they, the bold choice of like doing a hybrid 2D and then first, first person, person or, yeah. or over the over the shoulder thing is really wacky. It was like a bad a really bad version of punch out um 
it, it just it, there's some interesting it's, it's a very wacky oddball design and you don't see that m much of that in in old uh games or new games at all anymore um so it's yes it's a bad game but it has elements of it that i think are interesting all right nicely done okay we're not going that way all right this is this is one of our better my better runs for sure we're, we're just staying alive so okay hang in here nicely done <laughs> i'm doing like absolutely no damage <laughs> i'm helping okay good so it's like do you feel the story arc to this game is now completely done done forever ever like yeah for for definitely for this you know iteration of it if i do a sequel of course we have some other we have some i i, I kept some room to uh expand you know but for for this for this story of the, of the game um yeah it's definitely concluded i don't know if you've seen the conclusions but they are pretty conclusive no i've heard like the only thing i've seen is that people are like the ending is extremely sad that's what that's what the the, the chat stuff i've seen but i haven't experienced it yet so i think i'd say elements of it are extremely sad but it's um i think it's I think it's a good ending. I think the final ending is hopeful in some ways. Depressingly hopeful, realistic, but hopeful. And that's what like, you know, and I, and I know there's a lot of like fans of the lore and stuff of this game. Ooh. So this isn't bad anymore. And I wish um, this is a good item now, but that's that. We can always come back for it. I'm back for the kill the boss and then I'll be back. Okay. I'm going to buy this solely though. I just feel like we need it. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm. is this worth, worth two bombs, you think? No. Oh, okay. But you don't need more. You don't need more life. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't need more coins. Sorry, with your okay. life. We have 41 coins. Let's see. All right. Uh, Minnie's losing her mind. I don't know if you can hear the baby. I did. Yeah. How old is she? She's almost eight months old. Oh, wow. What do you have? You, oh, nice. In terms of. Uh, hey, ready. This guy's a bitch. Okay. okay. <laughs> Ooh, Star Wars bombs. Nice. Okay. We're good. Hang in here. We can we can do this. We can do this. Nice. Here we go, here we go. Oh, Star Wars bombs! Look out. No, no. Okay. Where so did that he's hard, hard come because from? his bombs uh from you. Uh, bombs okay. do uh I think it was when you got hit. Bombs do full heart of damage, so this guy is essentially like a womb okay. level boss, which is why he's pretty tough. Um he actually got nerfed considerably uh in development compared to how he was originally what uh, what did you nerf really hard. well the enemies that he used to careful he's gonna choose a path and go crazy um his uh the enemies that he used to come out with they used to shoot at you it was just like it's way too much going on um there is another trick to him as well i don't know if i want to spoil anything but spoil me i'll no, no i won't tell anyone I don't think it's gonna happen <laughs> for this run, but so when you kill him, he gets out. He doesn't die. He get he gets out of his little thing and he runs to a door. Um, it, try to kill him. He, he is killable. I'm dead. Come on, few more shots. No, he's dead. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He'll just let him go to a door. Oh, oh, that's what if you kill him, then he drops something, right? Yeah. Okay. If you can, he's easy. You have to be. You have to have some serious damage. Okay. All right, shall we go back? Yeah, let's go back. Let's go back. All right. So, Ed, when oh, you're yeah. not working on games and playing Magic, what else do you do for fun? Um, I watch a lot of movies. Uh, I go to the beach a lot. Um, what do you do at the beach? You go swimming collect, or just chill? No, we collect sea glass. 
we, we are they call them sea glassers and you know what that is i've seen like a movie where like i think in the adam sandler movie they do that but is it actual glass that's worn down by the sea or is it something yeah. that, it is yeah so but how do you find it you go to places that used to be um dumps for the most part like so back in like the 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 30s through the 40s i think maybe in some of the 50s are you feeling they, lucky uh, hold on are you feeling lucky why what are you doing oh yeah go for it okay are you feeling lucky again <laughs> you feel lucky again <laughs> no sure wait, wait what card is this because we could be doing more with oh okay. damn okay we'll check the oh they're all the empress huh? they're all the emperor so it's the same same thing but we can see what's inside this so it's hmm. feeling lucky <laughs> Just go for it. You can keep doing oh, this. That's three in a row. This is 50 50. Okay, let me, let me, wait, let me, I need this. <laughs> uh, Hold on. Wait, we should be taking some of these. You feeling lucky? Go for it. Oh, oh, oh okay. yeah, that penny, that penny's good. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um. Wait, let's see if I can use, I'm going to use this here and see if it actually works. I haven't seen it used. Oh, it doesn't work. What? Pin? I ate the um, the pickaxe, which is a usable item now that comes out and lets you chop at the rocks. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a funky one because it's it's an it's a new item type, which actually deteriorates each time you use it. And I was wondering if it would be used, would combo with the, the void. Oh, just so you throw it. the knife and it like would destroy all the rocks. Uh, you don't throw it. You take it out and you can slash with it. It's kind of like uh, Forgotten's Bone. Oh, okay. But uh, you're saying what was the synergy you were hoping would happen? I was hoping it would just come out and stay out. Oh, I uh, got it. Since it. But it didn't do anything. Let's go to right. Yeah, let's go to Mozzie. So you're talking about um, sea glass. So what is... Yeah, sea glass. So yeah, you go to a dump, an old dump, and in the shoreline, like wall where the, where the waves, waves crash, when there's a minus tide, when the tide goes low... Um, you can go out to that tide line and there will be a bunch of rocks and where if it's a dump where the rocks would be is a bunch of like sea glass and it's very reminiscent of you know any kind of collector's Welcome dream where there are rarities for each type of sea glass each color of sea glass each shape of sea glass and it is extremely fun and very addicting it's like treasure hunting what, it feels like that. When you basically dig in the you dig in the sand in that area, and dredge up sea glass, and uh, it's super cool. What's like? What's a rare that you're like? Oh, if I find this, it's a great day. Uh, like blue triangle, black, a black like really thick round piece. Oh, wow. that'd be like one of the rarest. But you could go even crazier than that, and you could be like, so like glass eye. I found some uh, dentures that were buffed by the sea uh, or stuff that has like, you know, like the head, the, the head of a of a glass sculpture. Uh, we have like the legs of a, a glass sculpture. We have like the torso of a of a um, like a like pottery. What is it called? What's it called? The not like not pottery, but the ceramic, like uh. like all that stuff. It's just it's just kind of it's kind of <laughs> nuts. I mean, if you're somebody who collects things, uh, it's pretty insane. So it's, our collection is pretty good. So it's basically Mar just marbles. Marbles are really rare. Um, the rarest, I think, the most sought after item that is not impossible to find at usually at dumps Ooh. Um, is a, a stopper. So an old, like, bottle stopper. It's like glass bottle stoppers. Okay. If I if, if, we, if I was on webcam, I can dig some up. We're, we haven't unpacked them yet, but I have. Is, I'm, I'm very it's something i'm very passionate about that not many other people shares share my passion is there like a secondary market for it like people will buy there the is. stuff yeah they buy it for to make jewelry but i'm not too interested in that aspect of it but so there's like a real demand like people like that stuff. yeah that's crazy over here in santa cruz um this is something that that crackheads do so there's a beach there's a <laughs> beach in santa cruz called davenport and davenport beach uh, has a stream like a creek that comes to the beach and it it flows pretty good upstream since like the 30s uh, there was a glass blowing factory and they would intentionally throw their remnants that garbage 
from the glass blowing pipe place or whatever, they throw it into the into the creek and the creek would bring it all the way down to the beach. And over all those years, it would buff these pieces of of uh, essentially designer glass um, to these perfect things. Those pieces of glass go for like 100, 200, 300 bucks a pop. For and a the piece of glass? Yes, for a piece of glass. And the crackheads know this. And if you go to that beach, there will be people there who don't have homes, who mm-hmm. li- live on the beach essentially, who are black as night from being tanned by and weathered by this by this beach, just wandering around in shorts, putting sea glass in their mouths, walking back up to the parking lot and selling these things for a hundred bucks a pop to people who come in and like tourists and stuff like that. You will also see women hire day laborers to come and dig holes at this beach in search of these treasures. I don't go to that beach anymore because it's like people get really competitive there too and they become total assholes. And then it just feels so farmed. Like people have been farming that beach for so long that it feels <laughs> like you're not going to find anything at all. But <laughs> we used to go and we did find stuff back in the day. I'm going to die. Before it's popular. All this talk about sea glass makes me want to go there. I miss it. That's, I mean, that's crazy to me. Like, but can you tell, do are there any fake sea glass imitations? Yeah, uh, you can get a you can get a tumbler, but you can tell if if you get sea glass, you can tell when something's. Oh, that was a good item too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can tell you can tell when something is a uh, is a fake, essentially. What what I, what indicates? Oh, we're toasted. What indicates the, um, the grain? You the grain you can't you can't buy, like the only way realistically to to tumble to tumble glass to make it look like sea glass is it tumbling it with sand and you would just need to tumble it with sand for forever. The grain on the sea glass is very apparent when you look at it. Like it's it's like sandpapering something versus like rubbing something with with a uh, some some random sand that's been thrown there for an extended period of time. So is sea glass like smooth and the other stuff is like sandpapery or have a little No, it's the other way around. Like sea glass is more rough. Um and then the the other stuff looks more buffed, more smooth. Oh, the fake stuff is buffed. Yeah. Oh, that is Ooh, this saved us. This saved us. Okay. How do we get some hearts <laughs> here? We want to go Oh, you're only getting it through here. Get them through here if you're getting them at all. Through Solis? So oh, middle yeah. one. Okay. Nope. Okay. Oh, yeah. You have the blood. Wait. I you have... have the blood penny. So you can get half hearts from from coins. Yeah. Uh huh. No. Oh, uh, one sec. I got to yeah. check and make sure our. our Kitchen's not flooded. You say making sure our kitchen's not flooded? Oh, we have uh, money equals power. No, but it is what? Uh, our dish- oh, what did I miss? <laughs> well. What? What happened? I was simply just blowing up a rock with some spikes in it to uh, go get some r- red chests. I was unaware the designer of this game made it so when you blow up a spiked rock, the rocks go in the floor. Yeah. You didn't see those spikes on the ground? I did after I went over them. <laughs> well, you live and you learn. Yeah, you live that such as Isaac. Man, subscriber. Um, Edmund, you've been extremely generous with your time. I appreciate you coming on. It was a lot of fun. Um, could you do three minutes of quick chat questions that I already have preloaded for you? Of course. Okay. Yeah, okay. of course. I'm going to go with the hard hitting one right right away. And, you know, we, we, we haven't held any punches here. This is from Noob Scrub. I wanted to know how did Guppy die? In real life? Yeah. Cancer. Okay, there's that answer. Um, Lil Swimmer One says, "Is Succubus overrated in your mind?" 
No, I, I can see why people like him. He's it, it's, he's good. Okay. Um, no. Okay. I mean, I don't think that many people are like so hardcore about it. I think there's a handful of people that really like it. Hey, Jade, it's appropriate. Jade Tartuga said, if you're at a barbecue, you could only choose one. Would you ask for a hot dog or a hamburger? <clears throat> uh, well, I don't eat I don't eat red meat, so I I take whatever I can get. Okay. Okay. So if you, if they've got chicken or uh, you know turkey turkey dogs, I'm fine with. I'm honestly fine with both. Okay. And I'm gonna ask for your honest answer on this one. Not that you haven't been honest. Ryu is asking, do you actively check reviews of your game on Steam? Why or why not? I never check the reviews on Steam. Sometimes I'll look at the if somebody's saying you're getting review bombed. I'll go and check the average um, and just see where it's at to see how crazy the Steam, like people on Steam love to review bomb right now because they, they really feel like they can manipulate the developer. <laughs> um, and it's, it's what the terrible thing about that is that a lot of the time games that may have like made a bold decision or whatever else are looking to see how the community reacts for the most part. And like I said, like watching people play and whatever else, and then retuning. The worst part of that is, is that some people feel validated. Like they feel like they've complained <laughs> and now they think that they have power. And that has definitely gone downhill on Steam. So you, people will review Bomb a game just because they want something changed back to the way it was, or they don't like some aspect of the game. Oh, um, and, uh, like mobilizing the community to say, yeah, hey. yeah. I, for the most part, I don't negotiate with terrorists when it comes to uh, that sort of thing. Um, but it is it is a rough situation because it's so. What's the word? Important to sales in the game. Yeah, you yeah. you wanna you wanna fix the game, yeah. but you don't you don't want people to think that they've gotten their way. <laughs> so it's it's a hard you know you don't want to be a dick and be like hey i'm not going to change this even though i feel like it should be changed because i don't want people to think that they got their way and that they have some say in xyz so you got to be careful you want to maintain your vision you want to understand why people are having an issue and you want to fix the issue without doing exactly what they are saying to do got it that makes sense. yeah no i understand it's a like slippery slope i get it malfina starwin yeah. wants to know what new alternate character was the most fun for you to design did that spoil something for you? Because I wasn't trying not to spoil that. No, I mean, I'll just... You know about that. Okay. I'll, I'll forget about it 12 hours from now. <laughs> um, They were all really fun to design. Like, uh, going in, we had some basic designs uh, for the characters that embodied kind of what their normal version was about. And I think early, early, in, develop, early in development of those, which was like a year ago, um kane's original design was he had a bag um and he was going to collect projectiles in it and either use them to shoot it back and we played with the ideas of 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 him using the shots to generate pickups and uh vin suggested because he should be a resource character because that kind of embodies what kane is like he's a he's a resource management type character Mm -hmm. So we wanted to be able to do something like that. And uh, Vin suggested that we make it generate items. And he said that we can make it like a crafting thing. And he thinks that he could make it so you can kind of like make a seed with items that you put in the bag that would mm -hmm. control what items it made. And, you know, I kind of said, I'll believe it when I see it. And then within a few days, it was there. And I was like, <laughs> super <laughs> super blown away and it kind of raised the bar on the characters and then we started doing more passes on them of like what what are some more drastic ways we can go with these characters to make them even cooler and i think for the most part we did some really crazy shit that i'm super proud of and they all feel very very unique and they were the thing that i was hinting about for ages and being like nope you'll understand why the game got pushed back by a year once it comes out like It'll make a lot of sense because not only that, and like we did these alt characters and then I think originally we were going to have like one item like you would have to clear. You would have to 100 percent their um, their uh, their checklist, their 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 post it note mm -hmm. um, in order to get it their item or whatever else. And then it like, oh, that doesn't feel good. So we added a few more and it was like three unlocks for each. And then I was like, no, we can keep going. So I kept having to come up with like seven like a sets multiple sets of 17 unlocks over and over and over <laughs> again and eventually i think they ended up with like five um, <laughs> for each 
Uh, so yeah, it was it was a big undertaking, but it was super worth it. And I, uh, I don't know how many people have all these things unlocked at this point, but I can tell you that the unlocks for the tainted characters really like once you get a hundred percent unlocks, the game is nuts, and uh, you can do some wacky wacky stuff with with all those unlocks. They're pretty pretty out there items and pickups. Uh, next question from Dang Front Dang Seat says: Is there anything? To your knowledge that has not been discovered in repentance yet yeah for sure okay for sure okay um next question is from atty tatty says what's the cool newest tech you've seen introduced in another roguelike recently like design i'm assuming yeah or, like okay um i haven't played uh what's that game called the one the, the the one that's set in hell that everybody likes. Hades. What's it called? Hades. Hades. Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't played that yet, but I heard really good things about it. Um, no. No. <laughs> the the latest the latest thing the last thing that really blew me away, uh, design wise in a video game in general was Baba is You, and I know mm. it's been a few years since that, but nothing's really come close for me when it comes to like wow. Like it was one of those things that was just so impressive when I, when I played it. Uh, next next question from Dopey Dragon: Thoughts on the Herloon Minotaur? Herloon Minotaur? Yeah, that's a, a bad uh, vanilla creature in in uh, Magic. Asterix Sucks. with with iconic art. No, you don't... yeah, it looks okay. good. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, it's a good looking. It's got he got some weird things on his head. Um, did Anson? Who who Anson, who made that art? I feel like I know the oh whatever. Keep next think, question. Yeah, I think you're. I think you were there. You're close. To, I can see the Anson name. Anson Maddox. Something like that, right? Anson Maddox. Yeah, I want to say that. Um, My favorite artist back then was um, Quill. Max Tedden was also amazing. I actually have a few cards that are signed by him. Um, but Quinn Hoover is he's dead now, so I can't can't. It's not as easy to get him to sign things anymore. Mm. But Quinn Hoover. Yeah, that art style was phenomenal. The Suvin Doppelganger is like my favorite magic art. Really? Yeah. It, that's a blue card, right? Is it blue? Yep. Yeah, I can see it. Are there a lot of... I might be confusing with clone. Are they wearing yellow suits or no? No, they're that's wearing clone. blue robes. That's clone. It's okay. two women. And okay. they are they are like Gemini. Okay. They're back to back. Um... Next one is from Coyote Shambles. What is your single favorite sound effect in Isaac? Um, oh yeah, the mulligan. <laughs> that one. <laughs> uh, what what sparked the change in the coin noise? Was it just time? I think we were just updating. Um, we were just updating a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot of new sound effects got put in, and a lot of old effects got improved. A lot of those sounds were like random stock sounds that i had I, I back in the day i used to get like i used to go to fry's electronics and get um discs that were called a thousand and one sound effects mm -hmm. and i'd still use those i, I would <laughs> use those even almost now like i'd still go and pilfer those cds for just random sound effects i i got I got a lot of use of um a, the page turning sound effect that was that's probably been in almost every game i've ever done and it's still in isaac now so that the, the page turning sound effect that happens when you like are cycling through achievements or unlocks and stuff. Yeah. In the game. Do, do you have yeah. proper licensing for that? You get the proper <laughs> licensing for it when you buy the disc. How much was the disc? <laughs> do you remember? Uh, cheap. I would say, uh, I'd say less than $5. Oh my God. <laughs> That's pretty, <laughs> pretty good. Brett Landuski wants to know what was your inspiration for the meat wheels? I didn't make those. You didn't? <laughs> no, that's Vin. Like, okay. so the meat wheels are were essentially a meme. There was a lot of there's a lot of stuff going in where it was like, okay, this is stuff that existed in the mod, and this is stuff that I think needs to be fixed because it doesn't really work with my aesthetic. Um, and the meat wheels were one of those things, and we would always talk about removing them or changing them, and then they wouldn't get changed, and it just kind of like became a thing where I guess, you know. Well, I guess it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's kind of funny that they're there, and I understand why they're funny. My argument was that they don't have a face. 
Um, I want you to be able to see a face on an enemy so you can kind of feel bad for them in some way. Hmm. It doesn't humanize them enough. They become more like inanimate objects. Okay. And uh, that was why it didn't work as well for me. Okay. This is heavy, deep lore question that I know this person really wants answered. This is from Rafru says, there's a very certain new end cutscene. Parentheses, you know what I mean. For you, Edmund, has it been canon all along? Or was it after the fact? Um, it just depends on what they are assuming that the ending is saying and meaning. Okay. But, um, yeah, like, um, everything that's in the game was in the game previously. It just wasn't specifically said. Like, the story in Isaac is, is pretty surface level. Like, it's just, you know, a kid who feels like an outcast and is in a bad situation, proceeds into his imagination in and attempt to flee and um dies suffocates in a box and that's always been the story and it's still the story for the most part now um and uh i'm just giving you perspective on the environment that's kind of what i've been doing especially with repentance kind of giving you more of an idea of who these characters are without specifically giving a backstory just giving giving you little pockets of time and memories and bits and pieces to fill in the gaps is do you ever think i mean like i know do you ever think you'll spell it out for everyone or are you like leaving it vague it can't i don't know if it can be spelled out because it's not something that's as easy to explain as like because it's not it's not a traditional story it's more of like a commentary on a lot of different things in society and you can't it's it's also a pocket of time for me you know it's 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 about me growing up it's and it's so loosely based on these things that's it's there's no definitive anything for it um the only definitive thing is just what i said like that's what the game's about and that's what it's talking about and everything else is uh i think i think the difficulty don't throw me the phone peach please <laughs> um i think the difficulty with interpretation comes a lot with the fact that you can't and even at this point i can't i don't you can't tell when something has happened in in game if this is all a figment of the child's vivid imagination or it's based in reality and that's kind of the fun line that i get to blur with the storytelling in the game is that you know yes all this stuff is happening but this is also being translated through the eyes of a five-year-old child who's obviously very creative okay I have, a, I have a question for you in when it goes to and this is, I just have to explain it in the way that I can explain it when you go into Zelda 2 world of the Mo Omega mom fight there's something hanging from the ceiling that's in a bag and there's there's two things in the bag what is that <laughs> I don't know it's rotten though I think it's too decayed to for it to I don't even know what it is. You know what I'm talking about? Like the side I know, perspective. I know. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Is that what it looks like or is it something else? Or we don't know. Uh, some sort of organ. Okay. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay. All right. Two more questions. Page 1944 says, Hi, Edmund. I'm very new to playing Isaac. What advice would you give to anyone new playing Isaac? Also, I'm loving it. Um, Honestly, the, the number one thing to get good at Isaac and learn more and just kind of gain an advantage is understand how how the secret rooms are generated. Try to get into those secret rooms and always be on the lookout for the rocks. The rocks, the X's on them. Rocks Bomb tinted. those rocks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then last question. Um, oh, go ahead. No, I, yeah, outside of that, that's basically it. And last question ties into you have a Kickstarter coming up, but this is from Moxie Anders says, in Four Souls, how do you get your friends to play more aggressively? All of their friends so passively do i need new friends <laughs> yeah this is actually a, an issue that i'm trying to fix with a lot of the designs of the cards um in the new expansion and they basically kind of force people into a more active role like they either force people to make enemies or make friends really early on which is what people play really conservatively and they'll just kind of like pass their turn and they won't do much and they don't want to look like they're in the lead and they don't want to you know look like they're playing favors and they don't want to attack anybody um there's a lot of cards in the new expansion that will kind of force people into those roles and a good example though there's a whole line of cards that actually creatures when you kill them 
um, you are forced to give somebody else a reward that you get. So you mm -hmm. get a reward, but you're also forced. You have to choose somebody else and give them something good. And of course, there's the opposite of that too, where it's going to force you to, uh, like in the in the in the early game or in the early game, the original game, Satan would, when you killed him, you would have to kill somebody else, um, and uh, that one, you know, wasn't just as common. So I, I'm trying to make more low level versions of those that force people into rivalries and also force people into friendships and uh you know it, it really pushes the game forward and uh I'll, i also want to make deck lists because i mean after this kickstarter the decks are going to be like 200 cards big at this almost at this point mm -hmm. i don't think a deck should be more than 100 cards after 100 cards it kind of starts falling over and it's impossible to shuffle so i i think I, i'm going to put up ratios and deck lists that kind of like cater to different play styles. So like if you're if you're doing a first time play, then use this deck list. If you're doing a more cutthroat crazy game that's more complicated, use this, et cetera, et cetera. Got it. So now so speaking of the Kickstarter, now that repentance is done, your it's been like pretty publicly documented. Now your your focus is, is shifting towards this Kickstarter and also Mugenics. Can you talk about the Kickstarter and then also what people can expect from you now? that repentance is done and you can take a minute to breathe? Um, yeah, so the Kickstarter will be a mega expansion for Four Souls. It'll be a lot of extras that people had requested, like tokens and that sort of stuff too, and a giant box that everything can go in, um, and a, a bunch of fanfare. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I, I got planned for unlocks and, and uh, social goals and stuff like that. Um, and then the whole other side of it is going to be a Isaac merch Kickstarter mm -hmm. um, that is going to, there's just going to be a shitload of Isaac, Isaac merchandise. And we're going to try to bring back nearly all the previous like figurines and plush and stuff like that and have them reprinted. Um, so anybody who missed, cause a lot of people missed out. A lot of people didn't even know the Kickstarter was active. Um, the only thing that sucks is like at this point, overseas shipping is crazy. <laughs> Uh, it's only getting crazier, so I, I I worry about the cost of shipping for overseas, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I mean, I just want to have fun and do another Kickstarter again because those are usually really entertaining for me. Okay, so I, so that launches in 54 days, and then and then now you're back to work on eugenics. Where yeah. what's the status of that in terms of where you're at and where you hope to be? Um, Tyler has been working on the engine, and we have a rough cut of uh you know basic level play of the game already um i hope to jump back in next week once peach starts going to school and we'll just start fleshing it out i mean really the the mechanics are there they're really really good um it is a a it's hard to explain what it is because it's a hybrid of so many different games but for the most part the core of the game is a roguelike adventure final fantasy tactics like game um with classes lots of different classes with lots of different abilities and shitloads of items. So it's like a got that Diablo y, Isaac y, you know, item obsessed, chaotic feel to it. And then you've got shitload of, of cats that have different uh, abilities in those, like kind of almost a skill tree set for each of those cats. And then you've got this these long adventures that are randomly generated that you go on. And the coolest part of it is that everything is focused on this hub, which is like a home hub where you breed your cats and it's got this animal crossing almost sim city esque aspect to it where you utilize money and food to continue to pass the day and breed your cats and mutate your cats and fill up your house with a bunch of items that your cats can identify with and then eventually mutate them into you know you know maybe having eyeballs that are like a cassette tape um wheel or whatever you so saw it's when you it's when you talk about eugenics, like there's a different like timbre in your voice. You sound like uber fired up about it. Well, it's fucking cool. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's 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 been really cool for a while, and it's one of those things where I just haven't. It's such an undertaking, and I haven't been been able to give all of myself to it for so long. And I feel like, especially once the Kickstarter is over, I have nothing else on my plate, and I can really, really put my all into this because for the most part it's been tyler working on it and me giving you know input uh and i want to be able to be back in hardcore because it has been my dream project for a long time and um i'm glad it exists again because it was essentially canceled for so long and you know after leaving team meet 
I'm able to do what I want with it and I want to do something with it. So release date summer 2022 confirmed? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Uh, I don't know when it's going to release. I would assume I would assume a good two years of development at, at, at the least. <laughs> All right, it's I, a big one. It's a monster. <laughs> well, Edmund, you've been super generous with your time, man. This is a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on and and congrats on the success of of the final DLC, man. It's been a lot of fun to play, and I know oh, yeah, a, lot, a lot of people have enjoyed having you on here. For for having me, I'm I'm sorry for the noise in the background, and I'm sorry for the rough start. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's great, man. But uh, wish you the best of luck. And then we'll be looking forward to the Kickstarter in uh, 54 days, man. Thank you for coming cool. on. Maybe I, can, maybe I can come back on then. Yeah, we'd love to have you. Want to catch up on the Dan Geesling Show because you can't catch it live on Twitch? Then go to youtube.com slash Dan Geesling Plays. There you'll find every single one of our live shows cut up in an easily digestible episode for your viewing pleasure. Episodes are up within a couple days of the show, so you're never too far behind if you want to catch up and watch live. That's youtube.com slash Plays to watch anything you might have missed on Twitch.